Good morning, John Austin back again, uh, 1998, those of you alive at that stage and mature and uh, knowing what was going on, um, I remember some of the stuff and I've been doing um, the years from 1990, I've been doing them up to the year 2000. Now, the Mahan Tribunal. On the 14th of January, 1998, the Mahan Tribunal opened in Dublin Castle. And it was to do with all sorts of things. started off with planning permission or something, and it morphed into various other things. It ran for years, caused a fortune, and everybody was tarnished by it. Uh, you know, uh, Bertie Ahern was uh, Taoiseach Stroke Prime Minister, and... Um, and he, he he started it, but he come a cropper himself. Pureness as well. He <laughs> ran for so long, but two these years. Uh, uh, tribunes, they don't have too many of them now because they cost a fortune and did they achieve anything? No, I don't think so. And uh, I think there was a fella called Gogarty, something to do with uh, Murphy's or something, and his evidence was taken as if it was truthful. He had a, an axe to ride. And uh, not good. And there was another individual as well, whom I forget, but uh, it went on for years. And a lot of politicians were implicated and press secretaries and you name it, everybody was brought under. Lucky enough, you would, wouldn't want a man to do with politics at them times. <laughs> You'd be up, hauled up. Uh, so that was the Mahan Tribunal. Uh, I remember the judge that was on it, and then I think there was another judge. Uh, he retired. Uh, and then on the, 22nd, the 27th of February, um, Ireland uh, joined the new monetary union of the EEC. Uh, when they were uh, going to um, have a, U EU, a European currency, the euro, which was a good thing in many ways because it meant then when you went abroad, uh, those countries that had the euro, you, 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 you knew exactly what everything cost. You didn't have to translate into, into what your own currency, which was the Irish pound. And you, you got to pin your head through to figure it out. Yes, and sometimes you might have to get their currency and then suddenly you were know, left, you had a pile of stuff that wasn't that much valuable. Uh, so that was the that was a big a big move because we had the Irish pound. And um, but then it was it turned out good, I think. Uh, and then on the 15th of March 98, Lord of Messingham, Hugh Coveney. Cork Fine Gael, uh, uh, TD, member of the Irish Parliament, and a former minister, died in a cliff fall in Cork. And he was a yachtsman as well. So whatever happened there, it was a very sad affair. And... Uh, and he was well known, and his son now was a big job in Fine Gael, minister. Uh, he was, I think, uh, foreign minister there for some time as well. Um, and then on the 10th of April, 1998, the Irish and British government uh, uh, signed a po po a political uh, poli and all the political parties in Northern Ireland signed a, a, a peace agreement except the usual suspects, the Democratic Unionists. What a crowd of anti democratic, they call themselves anti democratic scoundrels. Uh, except it. Uh, 
So the Good Friday Agreement and uh, Belfast Agreement. And then the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, by the way, the unionists naturally uh, don't seem to recognize Good Friday. I don't know what religion they are, are from. They call it the Belfast Agreement. They can't even agree on the on the fact that it was Good Friday when it was done. What's wrong with them? But they as thick as they look. The Good Friday Agreement uh, was uh, endorsed in a referendum, north and south, the people voting for it. Isn't that good? So we leave it at that in 1998 and we'll continue 98 tomorrow. So uh, there's food for thought there, isn't it? And look at the Democratic Unionists, they brought down the, they brought down the, um, the Assembly in, in Northern Ireland. <laughs> and they're going to lose out because their support is dwindling. People want uh, uh, to be able to live in peace, any normal civilised person, but they don't seem to uh, uh, have that objective. Uh, they're talking about a protocol and any old nonsense that they can kind of dream up and make a song and dance about it. They're not in business. The business people are quite happy with it. 99% of them, except maybe one or two old ones that you couldn't please them no matter what you did. So um, we hope common sense gets into their thick, thick skulls and go along and respect their political opponents. That's the civilised way to behave in life if they know anything about civilised behaviour. Bye now. Have a good day.